What is up YouTube? High Tech Lab here uh, doing something a little different today. I'm actually opening the box on camera before I get all carried away like a kid in a candy store um, taking stuff apart. This is from Automation Direct, the company I get a lot of my um, components from. And I opened this already to remove uh, the, the invoice that has um, personal information on there. So that's the, that's the deal there. I'll get to this guy here in a second. So first thing I have here, let me get my razor blade. Actually, I'll use this screwdriver and open this. If I open this guy up, I have in here a manual. We'll save that for later when we can't figure it out. This right here is a Stride model SE2-SW5U. This is a uh, ethernet switch um, powered up here at the top via um, 24 volt power supply. Um, so as you can see here on the side, uh, the power is rated at nine to 60 volts DC, 0.38 amps or uh, one to 30 volts AC, uh, 0.38 amps. So that comes here in the top and it looks like it's set up for redundancy. So you can have two separate power supplies. I'll look that up in the manual. Um, but this is a five port switch and this will go in my control cabinet. And that is very relevant to this next item I have to open. I have a CD here, but I'll never use that. I'll explain more in a second when I get this box open. Let me actually remove this box from the other one. And right now what I want you to do is I want you to comment below and guess what's in the box. And here is the moment of truth. In the box is more box. Nice packaging there. be important and we have something in here I guess I'll figure that out later save that this is all empty so that can go away and we can get rid of the other box so here's your next hint this says cut out template only so we'll use that and I don't know what this is yet but Here's your final clue. It's the quick start guide. This is a Seymour EA9 series touch panel. So I'm going to assume this is some sort of anti-static bag. Uh, this is from Automation Direct. And the most satisfying moment, peeling that plastic off. There we go. If we flip this over to the back, get this oriented correctly. There is a seal on the back to keep it clear of any external debris entering the panel to keep the NEMA 4X or 4 rating on the control panel. So that's a nice gasket, uh, very flexible and pliable. Um, we have right here the input power, which there should be somewhere here in the packaging a terminal block for. There is a serial input output here, another serial communication here, and we have mic in, line out, so that's audio, the ethernet cable, a USB device, so that can be a memory stick, a USB programming port. We have a slot right here for an SD card. There's a expansion module right here. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that expansion module is, but that doesn't apply in this case. You can actually get the AC power supply that screws on the back directly. Looking at the bottom in detail, we have this port right here. Uh, not sure what that's used for. And that's about it. So we're going to go check out our control panel and see what else we have. One of the things I did miss here in the box, you can see, well, anyway, down in this little portion in here, we have the mounting hardware. And in a nice anti-static bag, that includes the power connector for the back, as you can see. 
and these clips to mount it to the control panel. I'll show that better here when I install it. Here you can see I take this pin connector and plug it here into the port. And you'll actually notice there are two screws to lock that guy in there. And then you can make your connections uh, on the side just like all the other terminal blocks on the PLC. That's really good in the case of vibration, uh, making sure this thing, as it's getting beat up on the front, touched, poked, hit with a hammer, it makes sure that it keeps power to the unit and does not have a fault. Since this unit is super clean right now, I'm gonna go ahead and open the second package that's in here. These are the screen protectors, not to spoil it too much, but as you can see, they come with a nice cardboard backing, so that way they don't flex and get destroyed. And this is best to apply these when the panel is new. That way you ensure you have a nice clean surface. So as you can see, here is the screen protector. There were no instructions included with these screen protectors. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that they just get uh, stuck onto the screen. So I pulled off the sticky back and I'm gonna do my best to align the corners. And I have three of these, they come in a three pack. So that way if I screw up right now, I can try, try again with the second one. So I'm gonna line up one corner and stick it and then carefully align the second corner and it's off. Let's see the easiest way to do this. So I've gotten it squared up with the panel. I'm now gonna go ahead and run my hand over it, get it nice and stuck down flat, and then peel the final protective coating off the top. And as you can see, that screen protector has successfully been installed and will keep this unit safe during the installation process. And they have a nice little tab on the corner for easy removal for replacement with a new screen protector. That should help make sure that this panel lasts a long time. I want to take a second and mention that this video is not sponsored in any way by any company. I purchased this simply from the ad revenue you guys have cr produced watching the channel. So this was straightforward, made possible by viewers like you. Thank you very much and keep watching for more awesome videos. If you recall, there was this little strip that I was not sure what it was. It was a white strip that actually slides here in the side of the panel and can cover this Automation Direct logo in the front, as you can see. Now that's nice and covered. And I believe it's actually white on the other side so you could print out your own logo and stick that in there as well. Simply because I didn't know I was gonna be installing an HMI panel when I built this control panel the first time, I didn't necessarily set myself up with the best options for um, having a nice cutout in the middle. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove these buttons and leave the wiring in the back while I, I do this testing. And I'm gonna cut out this square right here and it will have a few big spots, but that's okay because the flange on this panel is pretty sizable and it can cover any imperfections. And then what I may do at a later date is build a cover out of stainless steel or galvanized, preferably stainless steel, that returns this three quarter inch or so on the back and has a nice finished face that covers any of these cutouts that are no longer used. But for now, I'm gonna get the jigsaw and cut this before I take measurements and have a nice uh, stainless steel or galvanized, preferably stainless steel cover made. And if I did do galvanized, I would paint it most likely the same color as these electrical panels because I did paint these panels because they were different colors. And I actually thought they were gonna turn out to be the same color as these wireways, but that wasn't the case. Um, so I'm gonna get this cut out and you will get to see that happen. So with the PLC powered down and power to my panel shut off, I'm going to begin removing all of these control panel items. So a total of 31 wires to run a handful of buttons and switches. You're gonna be surprised to see what the new system requires for wires ran. Unfortunately, I'm out of time on this video. However, I promise I'll be having video showing the control panel after I'm done rebuilding it. In the meantime, you've been watching High Tech Lab today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember to comment, rate, subscribe, turn on the bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.